Hey guys, Captain Kurt, thanks for joining me. Hey, I'm here with Matt Cash from Washington State. Came all the way across the country to train with us. We get a lot of people from around the world and across the country, and we always go to all 50 states too. If somebody can't come to us, we'll actually come to them. Right now, we're gonna do what's called simulator. I made another video out there. Um, it has a little bit of noise in it. Sometimes we had a lot of wind on the day that we were doing simulator. So I just thought I'd make another quick one. Uh, for those of you that don't know what simulator, this is part of the training that I've been using for over 25 years now. And I think it's just the best way to get acclimated with what it's going to be like to foot launch. Foot launching is a lot of work. Triking is much easier. It's a lot safer. Uh, in my opinion, it's more fun. You get the same effect. You can do the same things. Um, and, and with a fly pod trike, it, it breaks down. So it'll fit in the back of your car. So transportation, any field you can fly out of, basically with foot launching, you can trike out of. But people really like foot launching. There's a lot of people that want to do it and they like the challenge of it. But it is a lot of work in the beginning. And People are going to break in their first year. They're going to break a lot of propellers and cage parts from tripping and falling and losing balance. Doesn't matter how young you are. Doesn't matter what kind of shape you're in. Uh, does it, doesn't matter how good looking you are. You're going to break props in the first year. Unless you stick that machine in the back of your garage and just use it as a conversation piece, expect to break about three or four sets of propellers minimum in just the first year alone. Uh, so that's why I kind of tell people in my other video, trike or foot launch, you can listen to the, to the argument on both of those. Check out that video. Um, but in order to pre prepare him for what's coming, he's going to be running with this motor on his back. And even the lightest motors on the market, which are only about 40 pounds, by the time you add fuel, you're over 50 pounds. Uh, a couple gallons of fuel, six pounds a gallon, seven pounds a gallon. You're up over 50 pounds and you're running with it. So you're top heavy and you've got something behind you pushing you faster than you can run. And it doesn't, again, it doesn't matter what kind of shape you're in. I had a group of Navy SEALs come in, and they broke two sets of props, you know, just, just in training from losing their balance, lifting their feet too soon. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that when you're foot launching, all you have to do is trip and fall. And it doesn't matter what cage or what motor you have. And if somebody says you can't break a prop with their motor, they're full of crap. You don't even listen to that. That's nonsense. Everything is moving, the prop is spinning, and when you trip and fall, you'll push the cage right into the prop. This is T6 aircraft aluminum with a double ring cage, and it doesn't matter if you made it of spring steel, you're going to hit that cage against that prop. And then the other ones, to avoid hitting the cage, they put their props so far out past the, the, the cage that it's not... It's not it's exposed basically so then they then they have the opposite effect of sometimes when they have a failed launch as a newbie they're cutting the lines on their on their on their wing so it's a kind of a catch-22 but either way you're going to break props and and so we want to reduce that possibility of happening uh sooner or later it's going to happen we, we'd like it later uh if possible and if a guy can i've never seen anybody that actually flies their machine that's a foot launcher go more than a year without breaking three or four sets of props and then you start to get your balance and pretty soon you know you're quick with the uh, kill switch to shut it off if things aren't going right and you just start to gain the balance that you need uh, we do a couple things that help people prepare for their first launch one is i have them spend a lot of time walking up and down the street with the motor running, letting the motor push them, getting acclimated with the weight, getting used to the throttle. Uh, the intimidation factor is one of the biggest things that's going to cause you to have a failed launch in the beginning because you're just nervous and you don't know what to expect. I assist people with their first few launches and then I start to wean myself out of the picture, making them do everything to set up, bringing the wing up themselves. But we're going to learn how to kite, learn how to control the wing. But in their first few, I kind of make it a little bit easier on them by helping them with the wing up. But a couple of things that I do to acclimate them with the what's going to be happening when he makes his first launch tonight is, is to get him in this simulator so he can actually see what it feels like to be drawn off the ground. And I say drawn off the ground because a lot of people, when they're foot launching, uh, right when they start to feel the leg straps tighten up and the chest strap tighten up and the, the, the board against the rear end that's in the seat of this uh, 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 harness, they, they, they think they're there. They have a sensation of, that they're starting to fly, so they immediately quit running and they sit down. It's one of the number one reasons of guys at foot launch that they'll do that. The other thing is their poor posture of standing forward and leaning forward. And if you watch my other videos to look or not to look or to break or not to break, you're going to see some techniques that I teach that the other instructors don't teach. If they did, they'd have even more success with their students. They wouldn't be breaking as many props and they'd have a lot more success by body position and the way that they run and letting the motor do the work and looking at the wing, putting your body upright. But I have to, he's got to know how to have, learn throttle control. So this is going to teach a lot of things. He's going to learn throttle control how smooth he's going to give the throttle until he lifts off the ground. 
um, what it's like to get in the seat, how to come out of the seat when he's coming in for his landing, and uh, just to basically uh, see that the motor does all the work. You don't want to help it into the air by you know, starting to jump when you start to feel yourself light in the seat. You don't want to jump and help it in the air. You don't want to sit down because you're heavy. And when you sit down, you become even heavier and it's not ready to fly yet. And you come down and hit that bottom cage and you can break the props and spend out some money. Um, so what we do is we really want him to see what it feels like. This whole setup right now, he doesn't, the, the motor and him don't know that it's hanging from wood. It, it, it's exact, it feels exactly what it feels like on a launch when you're, when you're hanging from the wing. And so we want him to learn that. Uh, giving too much throttle on takeoff, mashing the throttle, can cause torque to make you run sideways. And three things have to be in line when you take off. The wind, the pilot, the center of the wing. So he's learning throttle control so that he doesn't go too much and make himself run off, off heading. You want to stay on that heading. When you turn around on your wing and your wing is level above your head, it's heading in the direction of, of the wind. And you want to stay on that heading. And sometimes guys come into the sport and they, 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 do, they haven't spent enough time learning throttle control and they just mash it real quick. And when you're running with one foot on the ground, is anybody that's running only has one foot on it. It's very easy to gradually curve off, out of that, off of that heading. And when you curve off that heading and the wing is not directly into the wind, the wing starts going off to one side. And of course, then they can have a failed launch or a severely oscillated takeoff. So we're gonna teach him how to do that but especially so he can see what it feels like right now. He's sitting in this position, and this would be the position he's in after he gets in the air. When he leaves the ground, he's going to do it in a standing position. He's not going to bend his legs when he lifts off the ground. That's one of the mistakes a lot of guys make. Even if they don't sit down, they lift their legs and they become momentarily heavy. It's kind of like standing on a bathroom scale. If you, if you bounce a little bit, you can see the, the dial jump 100 pounds on this, the old scales, not the digital kind. But you can actually see it jump 100 pounds. So when he's leaving the ground, it's lifting, what do you weigh, 185? Buck 85. 185 pounds. So if, if, if at takeoff, he throws his legs up into the air when he starts to feel it lift him, He's not 185 pounds anymore. He made himself heavier because he lifted his legs against gravity. So he's got two big chunks of meat lifting up at the last minute. And when you're, when you, you know, when you got this thing on your back, the, the bottom of the cage is only about, you know, two feet off the ground. So here it is about to lift a 185 pound guy and he throws his legs into the air and he gains an extra 100 pounds just for enough, just for enough time to make it sink down, hit that cage and that's it. And it happens a lot. So we want to get them used to being drawn off the ground. And that's what the simulator's for. So we'll go ahead and pause that video for a second. We'll We're going to show you. Did you already hit it? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. So anyways, we're going to pause it. And when we come back, we're going to show him uh, in a standing position. We're going to start from a standing position. And by the way, anybody that's using a simulator that's not permanently fixed in the ground isn't doing your justice. Because with the little portable units that that fold out, all you can learn is throttle control, but what the main thing that I want him to get from, a, from this experience is not throttle control, my God, you can stand against a brick wall and learn how to work the throttle smoothly, but I want him to get, there's a sensation that when he's standing there and he starts to throttle up, as he starts to be lifted, he's gonna have an urge to just sit down. And it, it happens to everybody, and anybody that's foot launching will tell you this. He's going to have this urge, so we want him to know about that because it almost, it almost takes over. And no matter how many times you tell a guy, some guys just, you tell them over and over, you, t you put them in the simulator, and still right on takeoff on their first flight, they sit down. There's just this urge that you think it's flying. Your feet should be moving 10 to 20 feet in the air on your first few takeoffs. Later on, you'll start to know that you're not gonna dip back down, you're not gonna come down and hit the ground, you're not gonna lift your feet too soon. But you wanna keep those feet underneath you, you should leave the ground in what we call a Gumby position. You younger people will remember Gumby and Pokey, we, you know, that, that clay figure. You wanna leave the ground with your legs hanging down. Once we get you up in the air, you're gonna ease down the throttle, lift your hands and take the tension off the brakes. You're gonna come down with these two thumbs and you're gonna get them in here, right here, and you're gonna Lift your knees and get the seat under you. So that's, that's kind of what we're learning here. So let's go to a standing position. And uh, actually, you know what? You don't even have to pause that camera. Just keep it running there for a second. I'm going to get you started up here. One thing I like about fresh breeze, one pull. There we go. Go to your side. Okay, I want you to 
the sea. We're going to come in for a landing. We shut the motor off. We see our landing field. And to get out of the seat when we're coming in for landing, that's all we do is, is we straighten our body. So just straighten it. That's it. Just like that. And you're already out of the seat. You just keep your body straight. Now, we have the ground here, but when he's actually coming in for landing, he'll be actually able to stand a lot straighter. And he'll be a little bit angled, but as he comes in and he's about five feet off the ground, he's going to pull and push. It's not a fast flare. You're going to pull and push. When his feet get to about four feet, right at about four feet, pull and push. One of the mistakes they do on landings is they're coming in and they haven't done it before and they're looking down. And everything's moving real quick. You want to look out, look out ahead of you, so everything's coming at you slow. It's like driving a car down the road. If you look at the lines in the road way far ahead, it t you can focus on one. It takes forever to go past your car. But if you look out the window, the, the, the li lines are going past so fast and you really can't have any depth perception and everything looks speeded up and when they're nervous if they're looking down here they won't judge the distance between them and the ground and you really want to you don't want to apply those brakes until about the last four or five feet you want to keep your air speed up and that all of that all of that speed will turn into lift for their flare and they really don't need to slam them down hard they just pull nice and smooth steady and then land it it's one two three and then their feet touch the ground at that point if they want to make it look pretty and do it like a pro though one two three when their feet touch the ground they start immediately start walking forward and look up at the wing to see what it's doing they'll turn around and face it and they'll drop the wing down i'm not so concerned with their first landing being you know a perfect lay down or anything else like that uh, but you don't want it to come down on top of you so when you do land look up at the wing and if you have to if it's still going that way just step backwards and let it fall in front of you it's not a takeoff so it doesn't matter but we'll learn to walk it off if you want to keep you guys if you guys want to keep your balance you're wondering why you're not standing up when you land uh, put one foot out in front of you like that and when you come in get ready to take that step and start moving forward it automatically centers you and automatically wants to keep you in balance if you can not hold your ground. You're not coming down to just land because there's a little bit of forward motion to it. You want to immediately walk, go into a walking because that will help you keep your balance and not trip. But on their first few flights, I'm always shutting the motor off. Uh, students have done some crazy stuff. I'm at 1,349 students and they've done crazy stuff if I land with the motor on. Uh, a lot of them don't land on their feet on the first time. It doesn't hurt. Uh, they just come in and they don't keep their balance, but we don't want the prop part of that scenario If it's not spinning it can't break so we just dead stick them they, they as they're coming in I'll tell them when to shut their motor off. They shut the motor off after the motors off They stand up they get in there for their standing position ready for the landing and they wait for it Wait for it wait for it and at the last four or five feet. They're gonna pull and push we had one student, I said in the other video, he went, holy shit. And uh, I like to go Bond, James Bond. And that's what I like. So anyways, it's a three-part pull, but it's, it's a fluid motion. It's real slow. And you can even watch the trike video. We're barely pulling them. And the secret to that is don't start braking high at 25 feet and pull and pull and pull and slow down and slow down and slow down and slow down. And then when you get down to four feet, if you haven't stalled the wing already, but as we get down to four feet, those same guys that slow down up high, will, they'll go to flare and nothing will happen because they robbed all that lift. They took all the airspeed over their wing away by slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, and then they go to flare and nothing happens. So they definitely have a little bit harder landing. Uh, but amazingly so far everybody's in good shape we have a perfect safety record we're very proud of that we offer unlimited free training we don't want you to skip it we don't want you to try to train yourself uh, we don't want you to go home and train your family so we'll train any member of your family as well and that really pisses off a lot of my competitors they don't like me I train uh, you know free of charge and they charge 3500 bucks they give you seven to ten days you can have unlimited training if you get your equipment here that's fine. That's good enough for us. You'll be having the best equipment. You'll have the Mercedes from the oldest company on the market. And it really, truly, honestly is the Mercedes of the industry. It's unbelievable what these have. If you haven't seen that in the other video, uh, Powered Player Guide or Scam Warnings Equipment or the other video, if you haven't seen this one, it's called Which Paramotor is Right for Me? Uh, while the other guys are making theirs look pretty or putting them on some YouTube celebrities back so they can get an endorsement, uh, the Germans focus on quality, better bearings, better ignitions, reinforced crankcases, uh, triple jointed exhaust, prop hub stabilizers, uh, nickel silk coated cylinders, just stuff that's not on the other brands. Fresh Breeze is light years ahead of everybody.
and uh, they don't want you to know that, and they don't want you to know about the free training. So I'm not real popular with a lot of shady guys, but I've trained a lot of guys to become instructors, and uh, they know exactly what I'm talking about. And uh, if you want quality, Fresh Breeze is the way to go. And so far, um, I've got a perfect safety record, and you're not going to pay that 3500 bucks for minimal training. We'll get you as much as you need, and that's the secret to our safety. And uh, we thank God for that as well. Uh, we pray with all of our students and ask God to watch over them and keep them safe. And I'd like to think God is probably 99%, and maybe the 1% is me actually doing something right. So he's amazing, and, and I'm not. But uh, anyways, I want to keep you safe. This is a great way. If somebody's wanting to train you and they're not using a simulator, man, get, get out of there and get somewhere else where they're going to use it because this really acclimates you. But doesn't it just, what do you think about this? Just, you feel it. A lot of it? different feeling than running down the street. I exactly. Mean, you're mucking this thing up and down the street. You're sweating bullets. You actually get to sit down in this harness and you get the feel of it. Game changer. Yeah, it really is. It, 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 you just don't know what it's going to feel like until you're actually hanging from a simulator. And uh, we have a new simulator that we're designing, and we're going to build it this year. It's pretty exciting. I can't say too much about it, but it's actually going to be moving. You're going to be moving when you do it and lift off the ground. So it won't even be stationary. It's a, uh, a different system that I've come up with than this. And, uh, but, again, those, those portable ones are absolute garbage. But, anyways, I just thought I'd share this with you, show you what we do here. The other simulator is, uh, video is a little bit longer. But uh, it gives you kind of a taste of what we're going to do when you come in for training. We go through a whole training syllabus. We got safety videos that we watch. But most of it is hands-on, out in the field, learning to kite, learning to do this, walking with the motor. That's where you're really going to learn it, actually physically doing something like this. Uh, you can sit at a table all day and go over, you know, how, the, how, how flight works and how airflow over a wing produces the Bernoulli principle and fall asleep doing that. But getting out and actually learning while you're while your hands on doing it that's what i like to do and it's 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 worked really good so we're going to stick with it i want to thank you for joining me subscribe to my channel below there's a button click on that you'll see all the other videos we have and uh, you're going to learn a lot if you have any questions give us a call we answer our phones from eight in the morning until midnight seven days a week for the past 28 years if by some chance you get a voicemail usually means i'm on another line make sure you leave a message we get so many robocalls these days that uh, uh you know we don't know if you're a robocall comment if you don't leave a message so make sure you do leave a message i'm super fast at getting back to you and we'll answer any questions you might have about it look forward to seeing you thank you so much for joining me